Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is going to be a very interesting video because I have a really cool stuff to show you. Let's get started. I should say that this is the best package I've ever seen. It's like really professional and quite heavy. I think in total it's around 10 kilos. This is a reviewer kit, but I hope that the final product they're going to ship in the similar box as this one. Ta -da! Look at this beauty. This is some additional cables. The robot arm. The name of this robot arm is B1. B stands for the bionic and it's produced by the Amber Robotics. I think if you will buy the robot arm, you only will have this robot arm without these two additional actuators and the Raspberry Pi. This is here is just because this is a review kit, so I have some kind of special kit. And this is really nice because we can look at this beautiful harmonic actuator. Amber. There is a connector for the power, connector for the data. The same on the other side. And there is also USB-C connector over here. I don't know exactly why you need USB-C, maybe to reprogram the controller. But it looks kind of cool. Like in this actuator, I suppose that the controller is over here. Here there is a motor and this part is the gearbox. Nice small actuator. I really like this harmonic gearbox because you can easily see how it works. And this is a small actuator. It looks very much the same, but smaller. And if I'm not mistaken, this robot arm has two big actuators in the axis number one and two. And it has five small actuators. One, two, three, four and five. The harmonic drive reducers in this robot arm, they have a relatively low reduction ratio. They use the reduction ratio between 30 and 50. And thanks to this not really high reduction ratio, these actuators, they are back drivable. And thanks to this fact, we can estimate the external load on our actuator just by measuring the current on our motor. So basically what I want to say, this hardware allows to use this robot as a collaborative robotic arm. So this is actually can be the cobot with a proper software. And this is a Raspberry Pi because I know that in order to run this robot arm, you can use the Raspberry Pi. They even put the name of my channel over here with uh, some typo. It's not psychnetic, it's scientific, but it's okay. In order to fix this robot arm, I have prepared this huge stand. It has these aluminum beams. It's a 20 by 40 aluminum beams. This piece is 3D printed. It's 8 mm thick 3D printed piece with 50% of the infill made out of PETG. So I think this should be solid enough for our robot arm. I think this stand has appropriate size for this robot arm because as you can see in any position of the robot arm the center of mass of this robot arm is going to be inside the feet of this frame. The size of this robot arm is smaller than the size of the human arm but still this is a decent reach which have a lot of applications. Here it's 20.5 and here it's 20.1 centimeters. As we started to talk about parameters, let me tell you that payload of this robot arm, at least the payload on the paper is 3 kg. And I think this is really nice value because most of the human tools, they weigh less than 3 kg. Another thing which we need to talk about is repeatability. On the paper, this robot arm has a repeatability about 0.1 mm, which is extremely good. And another small point that this robot arm can be fixed in any position, meaning that you can fix it on the floor like here, or you can fix it on the ceiling, so it can hang from, from the top, or you can even fix it on the side. So this means that you can buy two robot arms like this, fix it on some torso and have like a humanoid robot with the two arms. So in my opinion, at least according to the 
data on the paper, this robot arm is perfect for the DIY community. If you're wondering, these pieces, they are not made out of wood, this is just a plastic piece. Actually, over here you have the aluminum piece, and this is just a cover on top of this aluminum piece. In order to run it, we would need a Raspberry Pi. I have here a Raspberry Pi 4. So the robot arm is connected to the Ethernet cable. And in order to power this entire beauty, I have this huge power supply, which is rated to the 24 volts and 10 amps. The power supply is connected to the robot arm through this emergency stop button. I have checked that my robot arm cannot hit anything around it. So the wall is quite far, the screen is also quite far, so it should be safe to run it. Before the switching on the robot arm, I need to put all the actuators in the position when the actuator, so this piece, is opposite to the limiter. Basically, this means that we need to put this arm straight vertical. So this is perfectly vertical for me. So as you can see, for all the joints, the joints itself, they are opposite to the limiters. Now let's switch it on. Ooh. On the each actuator from one side, there is this purple color. Now let's enable the robot arm. Now we can do the homing. Normally the homing should uh, do nothing because this is already the homing position. The robot arm holds its position. There is like zero backlash. Like nothing at all. There is some flex, really small one, but I don't feel any backlash. This is incredible. And now let's try to run demo. Demo is a program which is like uh, pre-recorded and it just shows how this robot arm moves. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> this is cool. I'm gonna hold it just in case. And now I can do the homing again. And it goes back vertical. Perfect! This was cool! Yeah! So one more time. Demo. Go! Beautiful! Perfect! Nice! Let's now estimate the repeatability of this robot arm. For this, I'm going to look at the play at the tip. I know that this is not precise measurements, but just an indication. There is a flex, really small one, but I don't feel any play, neither in this direction, nor in this direction. So I should say that the play is too small to be measured easily with the ruler. So it's uh, less than one millimeter, and I think it's even less than half millimeter. Each of the actuator of this robot arm has an encoder. This means that we can move this robot arm with our hands and record these positions. And afterwards we can replay these movements. The original software of this robot arm allows to do this. So let's see how it works. Go! And as you can see, the replay works perfectly fine. It follows the motion which I teached. And so now we have two videos, one video of teaching and another video of replay. So we can put one of this video on another and see how the robot arm follows this uh, teaching motion. And as you can see, it follows really closely. This is quite impressive, actually. It works perfectly fine. Nice, I really like it. Cool. Good job, Amber Robotics. Now I have pre-recorded a simple motion like this. And let's see with this kind of motion if this robot arm can handle 500 grams of the payload. On the top frame you can see the robot arm without payload and on the bottom frame I have added 500 grams to the robot arm. And you can see that even with the 500 grams it uh, moves exactly at the same way as the 
without payload. The motion is not smooth because I pre-recorded this motion by hand, so my hands are not perfect. But it works perfectly fine. Like really exactly the same. Cool! It handles really easy 500 grams. Nice! Now let's try to do the same, but with two times half kilo. So the total payload one kilogram. Nice, one kilo, no problem. Cool! It's really great that it works perfectly fine with the one kilo. I'm really impressed that there is no any problem. I know that according to the specification it should work even up to three kilos, but I don't want to push it to the maximum, at least not now. And for me, one kilo is really a great payload, especially for this uh, affordable uh, robotic arm. When you switch off this robot arm, you should hold it because it can fall. And why? Because all the actuators is back drivable. Now it's disabled. So now I can switch off the power. And in order to secure it, I'm going to put it in the safe position. And so I know that it's not going to fall. It is possible to control this arm either by using the Python module or C++ module. In order to test this Python module, I'm going to use a single actuator just for safety and for simplicity. For the connection of this actuator, you need the power and also the Ethernet, which goes to your computer. I received this actuator with a dynamic IP, so first of all, I connected it to my router in order to change it from dynamic to the static IP. And now it has a static IP, so I can easily connect it to the Raspberry Pi, Jetson Nano, Jetson Xavier or anything else. And this is how it looks. The first thing which you should do with this Python module is to detect how many and which actuators are connected to your network. You can also change the PID values, you can run this uh, actuator in the position mode, in the current mode or torque mode and in the velocity mode. And you can also use the trapezoidal mode where you have the acceleration part, constant speed part and the acceleration part. So for this first of all you need to enable actuator. And now we can move it uh, to the position 4000, which corresponds to the one turn of the motor. So this is the shaft of the motor. One turn. Now we go back. Cool. And now let me show you in slow motion how the harmonic drive works. And in order to disable the motor, it's just the command disable. Easy. We can use the Python module in order to run the single actuator. And if we can run the single actuator, we can run the entire robot arm. But anyway, this protocol with which you communicate from the computer to the actuator is quite simple protocol. So I think you can write your own module for your own language quite easily. And here I use this Python module in order to run the entire robot arm all seven actuators at the same time. This is a quite simple program where I just move the robot from one point to another point. So there is four points and I move through these four points and afterward it goes back to the home position, this one. So this is the point number one. The second point. Third point and the last point and afterwards it goes to the home. Also with this setup, with this Python module, what I can do, I can fix one position, this one. So this is going to be position number one. Move the robot arm from this position to another position, like for example this one which we will call X position. After we will move it back to the position number one. After to another kind of random position, let's call it Y position, this one. And afterwards we go back to exactly the same 
position number one. So like this we can test the repeatability. So we can check that every time the position number one is exactly the same position. So for this I put the camera to the tripod and so we see where the position number one was. The second time it goes to exactly the same position. Now it goes to the position Y and it goes back to the position 1 and exactly the same as previously. In order to test this better, let's zoom in. And so let's put the arrow where there is an end effector at the position number 1. Now it comes back. And as you can see, arrow points exactly at the end effector. Now it goes to the position Y. And when it comes back, it's going to point again exactly at the arrow. Perfect. Just to be sure, we can also look at the other angle. Like this, we can check that the depth is also broken. And yes, you will see that for other two positions, it also points exactly at the arrow. And afterwards, I also pre-programmed some moves, which I think is kind of cool moves. And I really like these moves because it looks like uh, it's some uh, future tech or alien tech. So enjoy. Overall, I really like this robot arm. It's powerful and super precise. It's not very big, it does not have a really large working space, but I think it's big enough for many applications. The only disadvantage which I found is the cable management. It's not perfect, but it's decent and it works. And for this price point, you shouldn't complain for this. Another thing which I like is that all actuators in this robot arm has relatively low reduction ratio from 30 to 50. And thanks to this, this robot arm is also a collaborative robot arm. Meaning that if you will have the proper software, you can do it collaborative robot arm. You can detect the collisions with it because of this low reduction ratio. And in my opinion, this is the robot arm which we were waiting for the long, long time. It's powerful, it's precise and it's uh, quite inexpensive. I know the price of the components because I built a many things with the brushless motors, with the controllers, with the different gearboxes. And uh, for me, it's actually a super, super low price. I have no idea how they manage to have this low price. And in my opinion, the precision and the payload of this robot arm is going to compete with the KUKA and with the ABB and uh, all companies like this. This is really perfect for the DIY community, but also for the small businesses to do the automation. In my opinion, this is an incredible product and I think it will be super, super popular. And you will definitely see many more videos about this robot arm on my channel. So subscribe to my channel and hit this bell notification in order not to miss these future videos. Please don't forget to put the like to this video. This will help me to promote this video in the YouTube channel and also this will help my YouTube channel to survive. Another thing which helps me to survive is Patreon and YouTube channel membership. And here are the names of the all people who support me. Thank you guys and girls, you are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.